Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17093. This build includes a number of new changes and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 17083. So build 17083 didn't actually have much in it, which is why we didn't do a build video, but 9.3 does include some noteworthy changes. Uh, so before we dive into the 9.3 changes specifically, I just want to quickly talk about one important change that happened in 8.3, which was the renaming of Quiet Hours. Quiet Hours is no longer called Quiet Hours in Windows 10. In Redstone 4, it's now called Focus Assist. If we go in here, go down to Focus Assist, you'll see it's exactly the same feature. All the new improvements that are coming in Redstone 4 for Quiet Hours are still here. It's just got a new name. It's now called Focus Assist. And I thought it was just worth noting because in the last build video I did do, uh, they did change the context menu here for quiet hours. They sort of removed it, but in this build they've added it back and it's now called Focus Assist here as well. So you can now turn it off, turn it to priority only or turn it to alarms only, which is very nice. Also worth noting is when I started projecting this screen because how I pre record these videos is I project it somewhere else and record on another PC so that it doesn't hinder performance on this one. Uh, but since I'm doing that projection, Cortana is up here telling me, hey, I can see you're projecting stuff. I've turned on Focus Assist for you, which is fantastic. Speaking of the Action Center, the notifications in the Action Center have again improved when it comes to the, the reveal effects. It's now a little bit more prominent across the notification itself now, which is very nice. Uh, but the actual reveal effect is very inconsistent still in, in these insider preview builds. It's different everywhere. It looks different in some places. Its behaviors are different in some places. And in the notifications itself, when they pop up on the desktop, they don't have any reveal effects, which is really weird because they do in the Action Center. So the inconsistencies right now are real. They're very prominent. And if you don't know, that stuff then obviously that's not an issue to you but since I do notice that stuff it is a big issue for me and uh, hopefully they fix it before RTM they probably won't though because you know we've only got a few weeks left we're nearing the end of our uh, Redstone 4 development by the way this may be the last or one of the last Redstone 4 build videos we do before they switch tracks and start on the Redstone 5 stuff but yes that's one of the changes I noticed in the action center as well which is very nice so let's actually just switch over to the change log for 9.3 and let's start talking about some of the changes specific to this build so if we go into the a game any game i just downloaded this one and open up the game bar hopefully this works there it is there's a brand new game bar which looks very nice if i do say so myself um it's there it's, i mean it still has all the same features and functions as the other game bar did it just looks a lot nicer now there's lots of different settings oh you can change the theme that's the best thing in the world uh let's close that out and it's got a nice animation. We can sign in to our Microsoft account. Let's see here. This will likely take five years because the Xbox app on Windows is incredibly slow for some reason. Twisty Dolphin 66. Here we go. That took five years to achieve, but we're finally logged in. So hopefully now, if we go back into the game, which has disappeared, I've noticed. Did it crash? Okay. Let's do this. There we go. There's my username, Twisted Dolphin 66 and we can take a screenshot. Which, I don't know if that, did that do anything? Maybe. So maybe go back in here. Go to, I assume that's our screenshots folder. Yep, there it is. And it's taken a screenshot of that game, which is very nice. So that, that's the new game bar in Resident 4. It looks really quite nice. Let's also close out all of this. So one other change I've noticed in this build is that the My People Hub now has a sort of slide out animation that matches the rest of the flyouts on the taskbar. So if we click on it here, you'll see that uh, it slides out. And before the previous builds, it would just sort of pop up just out of nowhere. No animation, but now it does have one, which matches the rest of the stuff. So if we click on here, you'll see that there's the same animation. There's the same animation. If we go over to start here, there's the same animation. So they've 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 made the animation consistent, which is kind of nice. Moving right along, the next noteworthy change is with passwords. Now, if you're using Windows 10 S, Microsoft is essentially removing the requirement of passwords from the operating system. If you have the Authenticator app, the Microsoft one on your phone, you can set that up and just use that to log into everything. So for some reason it's tied to Windows 10 S. I don't know why Microsoft hasn't given any reasonable explanation as to why it's tied to Windows 10 S, at least not yet. Um, so I can't demo it since I don't have a Windows 10 S uh, installed right now but uh, here's a screenshot of what that may look like if you're setting up windows for the first time uh, something i can show you however is the sort of advertisement of windows hello if you have a windows hello enabled pc so if we go to the lock screen here 
you will see that, um, if we swipe up. So as you can see on the lock screen, uh, it's asking me for my password, which is right because I have set up my account with a password, but that's it. I haven't set up Windows Hello at all on this device yet. But as you can see, the Windows Hello logo is sort of showing as an option for me to log in, even though I haven't set it up. So if I select it, you'll see here that it says, want to sign in faster and more securely? Enter your password to set up Windows Hello. So if I type my password in now, and hit enter, it will take me straight to the Windows Hello setup area rather than logging me straight into Windows. So let's set this up here. There I am, it's setting me up. Oh, I'm too close. There we go. And I have to set up a pin. And hopefully that's working as intended. There we go. So now if I lock the PC, swipe up, of course it's asking for a pin. And it's not asking for Windows Hello. <laughs> Why is that? Come on now, Windows. You're better than this. Is that because it didn't successfully set up? It didn't. Okay, so even though I went through the process, it didn't actually apply that. Perhaps the feature's broken in this build. This is still a preview build after all, uh, but that kind of stuff does happen in, in these insider builds. But yes, that's a new feature that they're working on, which is very nice. Uh, so moving right along, the next noteworthy changes are with eye control. So remember eye control, I did a whole separate video on it back when it was introduced in the full creators update. Uh, they've improved it yet again in Redstone 4. So if we go into ease of access and scroll down to eye control. So if we turn on eye control here, you'll see that the bar at the top is now, you know, it has more options if it actually wants to show up. Really bar? What is happening here? This build is very broken. I don't know if you noticed the face stuff didn't work. Now eye control's not working. There we go. So we have the start button there, which does what you expect. Then next to that on the left, we have the calibration option, which doesn't appear to do anything yet, or maybe it is doing something behind the scenes. I don't know. We also have the settings option as always, and a quick button to task view, which is pretty nice. So I can now real quick select the mouse option, select the store here, for example, then press the left click button and that'll take me straight to the store. I haven't touched the, the trackpad here at all. It's just, I'm, I'm doing that with my eyes. Again, if you want to see this demoed properly, you can check out my eye tracking build video for that. Uh, but yes, they've just improved the eye bar in this and it's now a lot better. And let's also pause this. There's a new pause button, which is nice. And there's also an unpause button. Now let me quickly go back into here and turn off this. Okay, so another noteworthy change in this build is to do with Bluetooth pairing. Uh, they've simplified the process. So now if you, uh, Go into settings here, you'll see that there's a new option called uh, connect to certain Bluetooth devices quickly. And this only works with some devices right now, apparently the Surface accessories do. But if we try to pair a precision mouse here, you'll see that um, once I turn the mouse into precision, into precision mode, into Bluetooth mode, you'll see here connect to support with Bluetooth devices quickly. We can keep it on. You will see here that the new Bluetooth mouse has been found and I can connect to that. And now my mouse is paired and I can now use that mouse just with the click of a button. Or in this case, it took two clicks, but if you set that up next time, it should just be one click. So that's a really nice addition to uh, Windows 10 and it should simplify connecting Bluetooth peripherals. Again, it only seems to work with some Surface mice right now. I did try it with the, uh, the Arc mouse, the new one, and it didn't work, but the Precision mouse definitely works and it works just fine. Now, if we jump back into settings, you'll notice that the privacy settings area has been updated. It's now got the same sort of categorized sidebar as the ease of access area does, which we talked about a while back in a previous build. Uh, but yeah, you can now take a look at all the stuff that your PC has in regards to privacy and you can turn things on and off. And also, so if you're a privacy nut, you can go in here and turn everything off or if you don't care, you can just leave it all as defaults. Um, most people will leave it as defaults, but I know there's some of you watching this who hate everything that Microsoft does in Windows 10 and needs to turn it all off instantly. And this is the area to do it. So moving on, if we go into Cortana, you'll see that Cortana's sort of been updated or changed. Apparently this change has been present in some previous builds. I didn't notice it until this one, but so uh, the Cortana card UI that used to showcase, you know, the latest news, your upcoming reminders and stuff, it's gone. It's not here anymore. You used to be able to click down here and it would take you to that sort of overview of what's going on as a virtual assistant should, but it's gone now. And this is likely because Microsoft is rumored to be moving Cortana out of the search area and into the action center. And you'll notice that in these builds, some of Cortana's proactive content already show up in the action center. So when, uh, you know, a reminder pops up or you need to pick up where you left off, if you go into the action center, you'll see that that often shows up here under the Cortana area. So that's why they're moving it out of search and into the action center which makes sense in some people's eyes and in others not. So this is a sort of 
an interesting change that some people are okay with, other people aren't, but it's a slow process. So they've moved the main sort of Cortana experience out of search. They may bring it back in a pre in an upcoming build before RS4 TM, I don't know, but it's definitely gone right now, which is very interesting. Uh, also, the Cortana collections button's gone from the hamburger menu for some reason. And if we go in here, it's found in the list every now. It still exists. It's still the most, it's the weirdest app on Windows 10 right now. It's such a, it's like there's no fluent design whatsoever. It's just an app. And then, I, you know what? I think it's a PWA. <laughs> I, actually, I don't know if that's true, but it, it's definitely not. Um, it doesn't look native to the operating system. I'll tell you that much. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Okay, anyway, that's that. Also, another change I've noticed, which was actually in the previous builds, but uh, who cares? Uh, this link phone option in the timeline area, you can now click on this and it'll take you straight to settings where you can link your phone, which is quite handy if that's something that you like. Also, and I had to take a screenshot of it because it probably disappeared by now. Let me double check, actually. Yeah, it did. Okay, so if we go into... We're going to screenshots here you'll see that uh, the suggested option now actually shows sort of advertisements for other features within Windows, not just apps. So if you're in the settings app and you're not using a Microsoft account, you'll see here that, uh, oh look, it's telling you why you should sign in with a Microsoft account, giving you all the benefits and whatever else, uh, which is, I'm talking about this thing here. It looks kind of nice. Uh, this is the only one I've seen right now. I'm sure there's more in the settings app or, and all over in the operating system. And you can turn off these suggestions, this ellipsis button up here allows you to do that. But yes, that's a new change I've noticed in this build, which is kind of nice. So there you have it guys, that's pretty much it for this build video. Uh, we are nearing the end of Resident 4 development, so this will likely be the last or one of the last Resident 4 build videos we do. Uh, I'm not expecting any new big features to show up in these Resident 4 builds, I'm sure Microsoft is saving all of that for Resident 5 now. Uh, so um, yes, I'll let you guys know in a video if we are testing Resident 5 builds, that should probably be in the 17600 range, right now we're on 17093. RTM for Resident 4 is expected in March, I think, and releases some time in April. Uh, so yes, not long left. A uh, pretty exciting time if you're somebody who gets excited about stable builds. If you are just watching these videos for the preview early feature tests, however, then the Verse 5 stuff will be more interesting and that should kick off very soon. But until then, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.